Hello everyone, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming Film and Animation and what we're looking at now is the rotation constraint. So before we looked at the point constraint that looked at uh, the object's translation, um, but now we're going to actually look at the rotation keys and how we can constrain those. So let's say we wanted to have like an aim uh, on the edge of like a, a cannon or a, a spotlight here and everything, um, then what we're going to be using is this. Now I'm going to use the word aim carefully because there is actually in fact another aim constraint that we're going to be using if we want it to follow a target. But this is more if you were controlling the spotlight yourself and you wanted to be able to control where it was pointing that's what you'd be using this one here for so basically the way this works is that um, when I rotate this circle here it allows me to have the spotlight do the same as well and so the reason this is important is because it stops me from having to select that on the inside there and move that around and it just gives me a little bit of extra control without having to touch or move the bones which is very important um, when you're working with a character rig or any rig for that matter if you move those bones it can corrupt the fbx and all other animation files you're using so how do we get this to work well uh, we do exactly the same as what we do here but i'm going to do something a little bit different um, so when we come here and we start looking at uh, this option here, um, I'm going to first edit, delete by type, constraint. Same with this one here. And now what that means is that as I move this, nothing happens. So how do I get this to um, control this? Well, again, I go in the opposite direction than I would if I was parenting it. I select the, almost if you call it the parent first, and then I select the child or what I want it to be able to control. And then I go up here and I can either click on this one if I've already got my settings all right, or I could go to Constrain, Orient, and click on this little square here. This square gives us the options for any tool that we're using before we actually apply it. So maintain offset is an important one. That means that the object won't immediately snap to whatever this is. So if you've got it on a slight tilt and you want to keep it that way, that's a very important one to have. Constrain all axes is just basically deciding which axes I want to constrain. So in this case, I do want to constrain all of them, but there might be some cases where I'm using a pendulum or something like that, where I just want it working on one axis. So anyway, with all that there, I click apply. I can see that there is now a blue line here um, blocking that in as a constraint. And so what that means now is if I rotate this, we get that same effect. Um, so it's very useful, uh, especially useful when you're working with characters, but it may be useful for your animation asset as well. As I said before, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't move this yourself. You can totally move it and keyframe it without the constraint. It's really just a quality of life uh, and an ease of use um, uh, property that we want to look at. So thank you for joining me and in the next video we'll be looking at how we can use point and scale constraint to work with that bouncing ball um, that we were working with just before.